Good evening, everybody. I hope you're well and welcome to my latest instalment of Nutrition in the News. This is where I bring you information that may have been in media articles lately or research studies, just short snippets of information I think you'll find useful to apply to your day-to-day -day life. This is indifferent to the um, blogs that I do on alternate weeks on more detailed in-depth topics such as osteoporosis or things to do with gut health. And today it's more around, it's all about vitamins. There were three particular vitamins I'm going to talk to you about today. Vitamin D, vitamin K, and vitamin C. And the first one is to do with the link between vitamin D and K and bone health. I think we're probably all aware now about the importance of vitamin D with bone health. Um, I'll talk a bit more about that in a moment. But what I'm also going to talk about is why vitamin K is crucially important, how they work synergistically together, how they support each other to help create bone strength and studies and looking at meter analysis. I'll explain what that is at the moment. Um, so let me talk a little bit more. So bone health, you know, I'm sure you are all aware about the importance of calcium. In my mind, there is too much emphasis on calcium. Um, if we have too much calcium without all the relevant cofactors, and there are a number of different cofactors in order to enable calcium to be taken from the gut into the bloodstream and from the bloodstream and up into bone, lots of different cofactors, nutrients, vitamins, minerals are needed to enable all of that to happen and to help create and build bone strength. If we don't have all of that and we focus just on calcium, then we can end up with too much calcium going into the bloodstream and it's sitting there. And in fact, that's one of the things here I'm going to talk about actually with regards to vitamin K um, and how it supports the role of uh, vitamin D and getting calcium up into bones. Um, one thing just to say, if you've got calcium that can't find its way into bones and you've got a calcium rich diet, there is a risk that the calcium could stay in the arteries. It could also go to other places. It has to be sort of deposited somewhere in the body if it can't find its way into bone. Um, and one of the places it can stay is in the arteries where it could calcify. And that isn't good for your arteries. That's not good for your blood pressure. That's not good for your overall um, cardiovascular disease. It could also find its way, calcium, into bones, uh, where into the joints, I should say, and that could create problems with your joints. Uh, think about kidney stones and think about gallstones. They could also relate to too much calcium. But let me get back to the subject I was going to talk to you about tonight and the link between vitamin D and vitamin K. So... Um, there was a meter analysis carried out in 2020. You're going to think, what on earth is that? This is where there's been lots of different scientific studies that have been carried out. And when there's a meter analysis, it looks back um, in more recent times at all those studies and pulls them together and looks at whether there's some common themes coming out of those studies. So this meter analysis, looking at all the studies with regards to vitamin D and vitamin K, showed that the two together was more effective at increasing bone mineral density, rather than if they were taking on their own. They're more beneficial together than when they're taking on their own. Now, why is this? Well, first of all, vitamin D, its role in bone health, is to encourage the uptake of calcium, calcium from your food when it's in the gut, to encourage the calcium to get from your gut and into your bloodstream. So that's what vitamin D, first and foremost, is going to do. Now, as I just said, once calcium into your bloodstream it's got to get from there and into your bones and this is where vitamin k has an important role to play um, it's very important for bone metabolism um, and it, it activates a protein called, called osteocalcin and it integrates calcium into bone so that's what the protein does and vitamin vitamin k activates it so together you've got vitamin d getting calcium from the gut into bone and vitamin k vitamin k encourage that calcium to get from your from the bloodstream and up into bones um where it's integrated into into the bone so really important together um vitamin k helps to prevent that calcium staying in the blood and where it could calcify as i've just mentioned now there was also some links in these studies showing for postmenopausal women. And the reason why bones can become weaker for postmenopausal women is to do with the lack of estrogen. We've got estrogen receptors everywhere in our body. And after the menopause, and when we're lacking 
lacking estrogen, that can affect, affect our bone, bone mineral density. I've done other things with regards to phytoestrogens and the menopause. Um, but what they found was that when you used vitamin D and K synergistically together in the combination, it's especially helpful for boosting bone health. Um, and we tend to think about it, don't we, for women having gone through the menopause. Um, so mineral density will increase when you've got vitamin K in the form of K2 alongside vitamin D in the form of vitamin D3. Um, a 2021, another meta-analysis um, found similar findings in the lumbar region of the spine. So lots of different studies that have been carried out. I think I might have gone a bit dark, but hopefully the light's okay. So where can we find vitamin K? It's especially rich in dark green leafy vegetables. You know, this is your broccoli, your cauliflower, your kale, your cabbage, um, Brussels sprouts, you know, those fantastic cruciferous vegetables. So all dark green leaf leafy vegetables, not just the cruciferous ones, they're especially rich. Fermented soya, natto, tofu. Uh, tofu is not so much fermented, it's a good soya product though. Um, Tempa, misu and natto, um, egg yolk and liver and cheese. And of course for vitamin D we have to get it from our sunlight where it can be absorbed through the skin where skin has not been covered in suntan lotion. So we need a little bit of D in direct contact with the skin in order to activate the vitamin D receptors where it's converted into a hormone in the body. That's what vitamin D does. So that's the role of vitamin K2 and vitamin D3 and why they work so well together in the body. Now, my next little article um, and the research was around vitamin C and um, my take on how much vitamin C we need in the diet, very different from what you're going to get to the NHS website and I'm going to explain why. Now, vitamin C has many roles in the body. We know it's crucially important for our immunity. Um, I was taking and still continue to take, to take a lot of vitamin C throughout the sort of COVID pandemic and the first sign of a cold, I take a lot of vitamin C. But it's far more important than that. So having just spoken about bone health and collagen production, we need collagen in, with regards to bone bone strength as well and we need vitamin c to encourage the collagen matrix and we need vitamin c therefore to help that collagen matrix with regards to skin hair bones tendons ligaments every structure in the body needs this um needs vitamin c to help encourage uh, the collagen strength in the body um wound healing and um, immunity I've mentioned, cardiovascular health is, is a very important antioxidant. What do antioxidants do? Well, every time we create energy in the body, which we have to do in order to survive, it does what we call create free radicals. Free radicals damage the body if we don't have scavengers that protect and neutralize these free radicals, otherwise they damage our cells. Um, and that's where vitamin C as a very important antioxidant has a very important role to play. So signs of vitamin C deficiency, bruising, if you bruise very easily, um, it could be a sign that you're lacking vitamin C. Um, I didn't mention just now when I talked about your structural strength, your capillaries, your capillaries need vitamin C to make them stronger. And so if they start to get a little bit leaky, hence a small tap and knock and it creates a lot of bruising, can be a sign that your capillaries are not strong enough, they're getting a bit leaky, you need for more vitamin C. Swollen and bleeding gums is one of the first signs. Um, could be a sign you're not flossing enough, of course, or not looking after your teeth well enough and cleaning them well, but it could be vitamin C. Um, if you feel very tired because vitamin C is also important to do with creating energy from fats and proteins, we don't just create energy from our glucose sources. Um, feeling irritable um, is another sign. Now, it's possible you may not be getting enough vitamin C all the time, and I'll come on to talk about your sources to get vitamin C. Um, 
but you know it takes a while to to really show up that deficiency now you may be familiar with the term scurvy but we don't think of scurvy as a modern day condition scurvy is to do with a vitamin c deficiency when there is so little in the body you start to get this disease called scurvy you may think of rickets in another situation we don't think of these things occurring today um, but in the last 10 years in instances of scurvy have doubled they may not be in significant numbers but there is absolutely no reason to have scurvy in today's modern age and scurvy is more significant but those deficiency signs are not scurvy but there are signs you're not getting enough vitamin c um now the nhs says we only need 40 milligrams of vitamin c a day i'm going to come on to explain why we're likely to need much more um you know if you're not eating much fruit and vegetables i'll come on to talk about the sources in a moment then yes you may not be getting enough it shouldn't be that difficult to get 40 milligrams but I think you need far far more than that and the reasons why you are possibly going to need far more is to do with stress in your life if you um, are stressed a lot and you start to be more prone to infections I said it's an important part of your immunity that could be a sign that you're run down when you're run down your body uses up a huge amount of vitamin C your adrenal glands use up more vitamin C than anywhere else in the body and they use it to create cortisol and adrenaline so if you're very stressed and you're under chronic stress you're utilizing huge amounts of vitamin C and the, in order to produce your stress hormones that's going to take priority over anything else in the body for survival so if you're getting run down and you're getting infections you could be needing more vitamin C in your diet. If you're a smoker, smoker creates a lot of free radicals in the body and I've just said that vitamin C is a very important antioxidant to quell those free radicals, to neutralize them, to make them safe in the body. So if you're a smoker and you are not supplementing with vitamin C, I think you ought to be. If you're stressed, I think you ought to be supplementing vitamin C. Um, if you've got long-term dependency on drugs or alcohol, you are likely to need more vitamin C in the diet. So do you have a really rich vegetable and fruit intake in your diet? You know, I go on a lot about the fact that we need far more than our five a day. You know, realistically, in an ideal world, we'd have 10 portions of fruit or veg a day. Now, you would need to be eating a lot of fruit and vegetables to get the sort of intake that I'm going to mention now and I'm going to explain why this is safe um, and our fruit and vegetable now may not be providing you with the amount of vitamin C you need particularly if, you know if you're not growing your own if you're buying it in the supermarket if it's been stored for long periods of time picked ages ago traveled long distances and then stored all the time we're losing that vitamin C intake. You know, if you just walk down your garden and you're picking your vegetables from the garden, fresh berries from the garden, then you're gonna have a much higher vitamin C intake if you eat them straight away. So the NHS would say that you don't need to supplement because you can get your 40 milligrams, which is the RDA, from your fruit and vegetable intake. And I wouldn't necessarily disagree with that as a statement. But as I said, there are many reasons why we're likely to need much more and many reasons why your fruit and vegetable are not gonna be providing enough of your vitamin C intake for you. Um, they also go on to say, and I don't disagree with this, that if you start to take much higher amounts, then you could get stomach pains or you could get diarrhea. And I'll explain, yes, that's possible. In fact, if you have constipation, vitamin C could be very helpful to encourage those bowel movements. So yes, you would need to be taking ever such a lot to start to trigger diarrhea. Now, is it safe to take high amounts? Yes, it is, because it's not a fat soluble vitamin, which means it's not stored in your body. It's not stored in your fat cells. Um, it's water soluble. It's excreted out of your body. Your body doesn't hold on to it. Another reason why we need to keep taking and making sure we're taking an adequate intake every day so you know how much do I think we may need a day I frequently will take a thousand milligrams a day and I will frequently say to my clients I think you need a thousand milligrams a day or as a minimum 500 milligrams a day 
And I've just said to you that the NHS say 40 milligrams a day, which is the RDA or the NRV, the nutrient reference value, your sort of typical daily intake. That RDA was set to avoid something like scurvy. That doesn't create optimum nutrition and optimum health. So a thousand milligrams is safe because it's not fat soluble. It's likely to provide you with the sort of intake you need, particularly if you're if you're stressed, particularly if you're feeling run down, if you're picking up a lot of infections at the moment, then it could be very helpful to think about supplementing a thousand milligrams a day. I may take even higher amounts of that if at the first sign of an infection, um, you can get different forms of vitamin C that are more gentle on the stomach. Ascorbic acid as one form of vitamin C can be a can be cause problems, stomach upset for those who have very delicate stomachs. Not often that is the case. There are new forms of vitamin C on the market now that you may have heard about. The word is liposomal. You may come across a lot of supplements now that say liposomal. That means they're in a fat soluble form. That doesn't mean they're going to go into your fat cells and get stored there for long periods of time because at the end of the day, vitamin C is water soluble. But it helps to encourage the uptake from the gut and into the bloodstream in that liposomal form, more delicate on the stomach as well. Um, you can take vitamin C um, in time release formulas, again, because it doesn't hang around long. When you take it in a time release formula, it helps to encourage a slower uptake into the gut as well. Now let's come back to food sources because it's not just about supplements. The best sources are your dark green leafy vegetables. Every dark green leafy vegetable under the sun that you can think of eat it for your vitamin C intake. And that includes things like parsley and watercress and peas, great sources of vitamin C. We don't think of our herbs, but parsley is a great source of vitamin C. Kiwi fruit, red peppers, um, watercress I've mentioned, all your dark colored berries, they're fantastic, and tomatoes peas and yes citrus fruit but it isn't the, me the best source of vitamin c although we always think of our citrus fruit do eat it but it's not the highest intake you know high up on my list is those lovely dark green leafy vegetables in in all your different it's not just the brassicas it's not just your cruciferous vegetables it's all the greens every greens that you can think of is what i would be eating so i'm not saying that you must supplement vitamin c but I would go way beyond the 40 milligrams that the NHS says. You know, why is it supplements on the market typically start at 500 milligrams? You don't normally see a supplement for vitamin C less than that. And I, I'm not aware of any contraindication with medication for vitamin C at all. You know, it's probably one of the safest things on the market that you can take. So, you know, if you're bruising easily, if you're getting run down, uh, lots of infections, you know you're under a lot of stress and if you are a smoker then those are the times I would definitely think of supplementing and at the first sign of an infection if I get a sort of sore throat start to feel a bit sniffly if I'm sneezing a lot I might other than thinking it's hay fever which I don't have then I would be starting to think you know I, I want to up my vitamin C at that point in time so I hope you found that helpful um if you're watching this live I'm off on my holidays. I'm not around for the next two weeks. Um, I'll be back with a proper uh, nutrition, not nutrition in the news, but a live blog week commencing. I think it's around the 14th of June. I'll be back on the Tuesday. It's Men's Health Week and I'm going to do a men's health topic on that night. So I know most of you watching are ladies, um, if you're watching live, but you know, if you've got partners, it's Men's Health Week. Can't forget our men in our life. And um, so I've got a particular topic I'm gonna bring to you that's really important for men that week on a particular blog post. So do join me then. And um, don't forget, Peyton Principles Natural Health is my YouTube channel. Please, please, please encourage people to go over there. Please subscribe. I'm trying to get more subscribers over there. Stay up to date with all my lives. All of these go into my YouTube channel um, as videos. So they're all stored there. 
and I don't know, I had a hundred a while back, so I've got well over a hundred sitting there now. So please go and subscribe. I'm trying to boost my numbers there. Spread the word, spread the love. And um, again, always anything you're interested in, do let me know. And I will see you in a couple of weeks. Hope you have a nice week if you're taking the week off. Jubilee week, whatever you're up to. Hope you have a good week. Um, but as I said, I'll be back in two weeks time. Thanks everybody, bye.